Just check this out. Well, not the camera, I mean the strap. Camera strap is not a new product, it's not an innovative product, you know, it doesn't disrupt anything, it's just a strap. Look how dirty it gets. This is not for everyone, all right, because it's got stain all over the place. What I will need to do is make it even dirtier. We all want to look preppy, clean, sophisticated. For me, I'm okay with that. I don't have to look preppy. As a matter of fact, I don't really like wearing suits, having a tie on. I'm done with that. <laughs> Recently, some guy came up to me and I said, hey, Vic, I've got this really brilliant business opportunities. Hey, let's start a YouTube channel talking about photography. We will set up an online shop and then we will open a physical, actual physical shop. Uh, another one? Okay. Um, so I said, all right, that's, that's, that's what a lot of us are doing anyway. And he goes, well, yeah, we can always rely on the other brands, but we can use, um, while we are selling these brands, we can always develop our own brand. We can learn the pros and the cons and then apply it into our own brand. I was like, oh, okay, that's, and I, so I asked him, I said, okay, let's start off with the YouTube channel. Uh, what will you be talking about? Are you, are you planning to like, hey guys, my name is Victor and I'm here to tell you about camera straps. My camera straps are wonderful. It's really good looking. Um, and, uh, come on. If you want to sell camera straps and at the same time you think video or YouTube is going to help you promote your brand, how would you go around doing or setting up a YouTube channel? What would you talk about? What will you talk about? What could you talk about? So my friend said, well, I am going to teach, no, not me, him. He said he will teach, he will be teaching um, the techniques of street photography. Wow, okay, that's, you know, that's... So I asked him, I said, hey, hey, look, I never knew you were into photography. I mean, how do you go, go around doing it? You're not qualified to teach anything. And then he said, like, well, I have been attending various um, master classes of reputable photographers you know I've learned all there is to learn and then what I would do is I would apply these knowledge and share with the rest of the audience okay that's I suppose that that will work right right I, I don't, well to cut the story short what he's thinking about is getting all these various products from all over the world and then basically duplicate these items and turn them into his own brand or his own product. You're just basically copying things from other people. At the same time, you have nothing to offer. His whole plan relies very much on imitating others. I don't know. It's just, I don't think it's going to work out. Well, anyway, uh, enough with the business talk. I mean, frankly, there's nothing to talk about in terms of business-wise because you do what you do. What is happening here in Hong Kong, it is compulsory for us to wear a mask whenever we are outdoor. Now, we can't even drop the mask down to have a smoke. So it's kind of inconvenient, you know, especially it does affect us because um, we do go out every morning, early in the morning to do some exercise. Even while we're doing the exercise, we have to wear the mask. So that kind of sucks. Well, back then, before I started doing any bartend, I was, well, I was all over the place. You know, I did a lot of traveling, a lot of fishing, a lot of wakeboarding, a lot of scuba diving. You know, I was completely tan. I got into photography because of traveling. Then next thing you know, I really got into photography. But instead of going out to make images, I would just stay online and looking for new lenses or cameras to buy. I don't regret doing it because in all honesty, it was kind of fun shopping for <laughs> lenses. Um, my goal is to stop buying cameras and lenses because, well, it's true I am still using these old cameras. For example, the GH4, well, the Leica SL, the first generation, and also the monochrome CCD. The thing is, 
I don't you know I'm not really into the new camera cameras anymore because well what's the point what is the difference between an older camera versus a new camera okay more pixel count but but so what but and at the same time a lot of uh, these new lenses that they are coming out they don't they don't particularly excite me anymore you know I would have a more or less a similar lens in my cabinet somewhere well, the only lens that I w I'm using on a on a regular basis it's uh, 35 somewhere around 3.5. Yeah, that's my lens. It's an um, inexpensive lens. I love it. It's small. It's nice and compact. Hey, Vic, are you gonna get the SL2? Are you gonna get the GH5? Are you gonna get this and that? Uh, you know, a lot of the time I would say no. You know, they don't really excite me that much. Until, but once in a blue moon, new lenses will come out that I find it to be, you know, I find these lenses to be really exciting. For example, the Lomography Patsville, I think it's a 55. Second one, you know, which came out recently, it's the, this is it, okay. I've been dying to get a uh, anamorphic lens. I was this close to get um, the Engineers uh, anamorphic lens, which cost like what, 40 grand US? If I did get that lens, Carmen would kill me. <laughs> but instead, I've got I got myself this anamorphic by Syria. It's only this puppy. It's what six hundred bucks. So that's pretty darn cheap, compared especially compared to the the engineer's lens. How does it compare to between these two? It doesn't matter because this darn thing is so much cheaper than the other one. Now, as far as I'm concerned. This is, a, this is a true anamorphic lens, so, so I'm happy. Now, I, ju I just got this lens yesterday. My first impression, it's, well, this, this lens is pretty darn solid. It's nice and hefty. The one that I've got, it's a Micro Four Third mount. And the reason why I got this instead of uh, the Sony or the Fuji mount, I don't have a Fuji camera, nor do I have, um, the Sony. Well, I do have a Sony A7, but that's a really old camera, and it doesn't really perform that well in terms of um, video. But at the same time, this lens, this anamorphic, this guy here, as far as I'm concerned, this is a true cinema lens. And plus, I could always get an adapter and mount it to the Sony E mount, or maybe the Fuji, whichever I decide to go in the near future. Yeah, in the near future. Hmm. The reason why I said that is because I have seen the spec of that new Sony camera. I think it's very powerful, but the only problem is my computer won't be able to hack it. So I'm still debating whether I should get it or not, but most likely I would just... What do I think about this? I don't know. I would have to go out and use it. Uh, probably nighttime. Like I said, you know, I have to wear a mask whenever I'm outdoors, so that's kind of inconvenient, and especially it's raining these days in Hong Kong. It's humid, it's wet, quite miserable these days in here in Hong Kong. So maybe, maybe in the near future, hopefully the, when the weather gets better, I will go out. So excited that I've got this anamorphic lens. Oh, well, that's about it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Um, I, I don't know what else to say. You know, from a commercial point of view, maybe I should say, oh, guys, go over to our website and get yourself a really kick-ass fan. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Bye, guys.